Kutztown University was founded in this very location in 1866. The original Old Main was built on this location. And through the years, the, the building grew. The original building was torn down in the 1880s. They built the building that is actually the main building with the clock tower that is standing in this location now was built in the 1880s and they expanded and added wings throughout the years. One of the famous stories as we celebrated our sesquicentennial during the 2016 uh, into 2015-16 uh, school year was the tradition of the ghost of Mary who apparently haunts the, the halls of, of Old Main and the stories of Mary go back as far as we can tell back into the, into the 50s and the 60s and it's been investigated throughout the years and there's been several different legends related to the story itself, who Mary was and why she haunts the halls. But um, there wasn't a Mary, Mary Snyder, who was supposed to be a part of the class of 1895 who died the night before graduation of actual swelling of the brain and that is the true Mary who the story is related to. She's buried in Jackson Wall, not too far away. Back in the day, it would have been a, it would have been a full day's trip to get to campus from Jackson Wall, but uh, now it's about a 30 minute car ride and we actually uh, were able to, to find her burial spot back in the, uh, in the fall of, of 2016. That's interesting. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna set up uh, for a paranormal investigation. We're going to run some surveillance on the top two hallways. We're going to have some cameras aiming down the hallway, so if there's anything that passes by, uh, we'll be able to review that footage and, and uh, see exactly what it was. And uh, we're going to go through with some basic equipment. We're going to test uh, the EMF levels. Um, we're going to do some recordings and take some pictures throughout so we can pick up any anomalies. So the setup is we have our uh, DVR system with two cameras. We have one 60-foot cable attached to uh, the DVR, and that has one camera that is going to be pointing here down this hallway. Right. You can see we have a prop there. Now, the other one is 160 feet, and that is going uh, down to the fourth floor, since we're on the fifth. The fourth floor is also abandoned at this time, and that is set up down there to also point down the hallway. We don't have a lot of access into the rooms. But we do have uh, one room that we found open, so we're putting a, um, a camera in there as well. I believe he has a trail cam set up inside there. I do, I yes. do. And furthermore, um, right down here, uh, unless I'm confusing it with the other floor, in the bathroom, just in case something passes by, I set another trail cam. So we have another one right in there um, that's set up. It's got IR, it's got night vision, everything else. And that's set to video. So if something comes by here and triggers that, it'll start running video as well. So a video from here, video from there, right. and then down the next level. So here we have a spirit box. This is what you might call a shack hack because it's a radio shack radio. And um, what had to occur here was I had to break it open and rewire uh, the circuit board just a little bit to be able to, be able to make it work. And uh, we can make it flip through the stations. If you're not familiar with it, it just basically scans through all of the frequencies, either on the AM or the FM band. And um, supposedly it is a medium by which the spirits are supposed to be able to talk through. So um, we're not sure exactly how it works, but we have had some very good results with it in the past. Now tonight we're going to be trying something a little bit different. You can see I have um, my earbuds are plugged into the top of it. Um, Jeff is going to ask questions and I am going to have the earbuds in my ears listening for responses. I'm not going to be able to hear his questions. I'm only going to be able to hear words that come through this. Right. And, and the reason for that is um, because with the spirit box, the, it's like, like Linda said, it's believed that spirits can communicate through there. They can manipulate whether there's different theories. Some say they can manipulate the radio waves. Some say they can actually take bits and parts of speech and mix it together. Some say they can speak to the white noise. Right. But one of the things that debunk it is something called audio pareidolia, mm -hmm. where your brain takes senseless noise and puts it together into responses and words that you're expecting to hear. Right. So that being said, if Linda doesn't hear the questions that I'm asking, then she won't be biased in any way in what answer she's hearing through those headphones. Right. So that's right. why she's going to listen to the headphones and she's just going to shout out any answers that she might get 
um, to the questions that I'm asking. Right. And I think what we're going to do with this is we're going to walk through the hall here and maybe kind of do a whole sweep of both halls just to see if there's any points in, the, in these two hallways where there is active responses. And that way we'll know to set up there for maybe an EVP session. All right, let me know when you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? All right, so I have this thing going. Okay. You ready? Good, that seemed to work. Okay. All right, let's go. I'm just going to call things out whenever I hear it, okay? Okay. All right, so uh, we don't mean to impose by any means, but we do want to know uh, if there is anybody here with us. We've heard that there's someone hanging out here, possibly in the hallway or in the building. Can you tell us your name? If there is anybody here with us, can you tell us your name? And I'm going to give it a little bit of time uh, for the response because we don't know how things work. If there is another realm or you know anything like that uh, on that plane, how quick Heart. they can respond. Heart. Okay. How many people are here with us? Besides the four of us, how many people, how many others are here in this hallway? First, not here. Okay. And it sounded like it made a little bit more sense than some of the other things, but still not definitely anything. Uh, Okay, if not here, can you tell us where you would like us to go? Can you tell us what year it is? 40? That don't know? Can you possibly tell us one of our names? I'm Jeff. This is Linda. Brandon. Could you say one of our names? Sounded like it said ghost. Okay. Student. That's an interesting one. Were you a student here? So uh, on our first sweep down the two hallways. We had Linda with the headphones in so she couldn't hear the questions I was asking and she just blurted out whatever she thought she heard on there. And for the most part, nothing really seemed related. Um, you heard some of the responses that we got on the video, just some random things like knife. Um, there were some, some more that were interesting but not really, you know, they didn't sound like things that you particularly hear on the radio but at the same time, I couldn't really tie them in with any of the reports at this location. Uh, one thing that was interesting, and we'll have to look back at it, um, when I asked, do you know what year it is, she almost immediately blurted out 40. So I don't know if that was just a coincidence that the number 40 came across on the radio or if that it was something coming through answering my question. Um, but we'll look at the surveillance cameras at that point as well and see if there was any anomalies on there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to take the recorder around and some flashlights and we're going to do some flashlight sessions and some EVP sessions and see if we can pick up any kind of uh, disembodied voices on the recordings. So we're going to do a flashlight session here. We have two different colored mag lights and uh, some of you may know that the flashlight sessions um, that you've seen on TV, sometimes they use one fly a flashlight. Uh, we prefer to use two of them and we want to use two that are different colors so that we can establish a, a, a pattern of communication first. Now how we do this you'll probably see, but we'll ask whoever may be here to turn on the blue flashlight first 
and then turn on the red one and perhaps the blue one again. If it can do that in that order, then we know that it's not just random fl flashlight turn-ons, which these things are known to do. And a lot of people on the, their videos will say, oh, well, the flashlights have been de debunked and all that. Yes, they have been debunked, but the way that you use these things makes a big difference as well. If we have one sitting up here and we say, oh, is your name Jenny? And the thing flashes and comes on, then, you know, Nobody, right. Nobody it's going to light up. Random. It's right. going to light up anyway. Right. But, so we got to establish that communication. Yes. Uh, yes. With the flashlight. This is why you always need to use two of them. Right. Oh, that was interesting, huh? That was interesting. Okay, so just a random spike on the EMF detector. Um, it's been sitting here. It could have very well come through the floor. I don't know. It but, could. Uh, we'll have we'll to see if it happens again. Stand. We'll keep that monitoring. Yeah. Okay. So we have the two flashlights set up over there on the window. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, and we have blue on the right and red on the left. Okay, great. And we'd like to know if there is anybody here with us. If there is, we have some flashlights set up on the window so there. And we'd like to see if you can turn them on. Okay, one's red, one's blue. Could you possibly turn on the red flashlight for us, please? The red flashlight, that's the one on the left. The flashlights are these two colored metal sticks that we have here. And um, in case you didn't see me messing with them earlier, playing with them, they light up, they create light from the front end. And if you touch one of these or manipulate it in some way, you may be able to make the light come on on one of them. We got a uh, flashlight coming on. And actually it is a red one. It took a little while. Uh, if you are manipulating that flashlight, could you turn it off for us, please? Could you turn the red flashlight off, please? I see the blue one. Is that sirens? It's a girl scream. They have come from outside, I don't know, because we're next, we're at the end of the building. Mm -hmm. Could so, have been. Uh, we have to establish that we're actually communicating with someone and not that these flashlights are, are lighting up illuminating and, and um, turning off randomly. What? I see you scared me. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. That is interesting. I went to Kutztown State Teachers College way back in 68, 69. I lived in Old Main on the fourth floor. Back then we were called the Crispy Critters because as we were told, it would take one minute for the building to become engulfed in flames and 90 seconds for us to get out. But I digress, my room was near the elevator and at that time the fifth floor was not used and was boarded and chained. Uh, several of us, including our house mother, heard footsteps overhead. That's where we are now. We called security who also heard the footsteps. The security guard went to the fifth floor via the, via the elevator, elevator but found nothing but footprints in the dusty floor that started in the middle of the hallway and continued for about 20 feet before ending. No window or door access was close to the footsteps as they were in the exact middle of the hallway and over 40 years I could still hear those footsteps submitted by Cindy. So if the elevator's down there and there's, there's 12 doors, and I count, I went to the, I went to the middle between the rooms, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So there's six, there's six doors on either side from, from Brandon's down at the elevator. Right. Am I right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the middle. That's, this is the middle, and, and it, these are probably more than a foot, though, but. They probably are. Um... 
but if you if I took 20 of these and ended up these are probably right outside of 525 that's right one, and it's interesting two, because three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, if it's 20 so they disappeared right I mean about 20 and that's all right. you know, he can remember he's probably freaked out so yeah. it's around here. Right I mean, here I mean, the back there would be more closer to maybe twenty on one of these two. But what's interesting is we were going to set up for an EVP session right here, weren't we? Yes. You said five. Did we get that on video earlier? No. Because you said let's go down to five twenty-five. I don't know if you were recording at that time. Well, you were trying to get in here. I was. You, yeah, you, you were just like shaking it and saying. Yeah. When you guys knocked on this door, did you hear anything? No, I didn't. So I, I wanted to do a, a, an EVP session next to 525 because when we were walking through here doing the spirit box session earlier, we were coming back up this way. We had gone down the hall the way this way and come back up. Uh, this room in particular gave me a strange feeling. Um, now, I don't claim to be a psychic or sensitive or anything like that, but there was something about this particular doorway that felt different than the rest of them did. Like a different energy, perhaps. Like a different energy, yeah. exactly. And that's why I returned to this room um, while he was down at the end of the hallway here and tried to knock on it or tried to jiggle the doorway, door and there was something wrong, wasn't it? Mm hmm I said, there was something down there, wasn't it? Sounds mm -hmm. like something. I'm click. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary, if that's you, can you turn on the red flashlight for us? Thank you. Would you turn it back off? Thank you very much. Okay, turn the red one off. And try turning on the blue flashlight for us. So now we have the blue flashlight coming on. Right, but my concern is with the flashlights is once again, if you wait long enough, you know, right. any one of them is going to come on. Yeah. They're both going to come on eventually, most likely. And for me, I don't think the, the results we're getting with these flashlights, I don't think they're conclusive enough. I don't think they're coming on. Uh, I think they're a little too random still. You know, I, for me to say, all right, we've got a, a line of communication here or a connection of any sort, I need to see the red one come on. We say red, then blue, and not have to, you know, nothing else in between. Right. Nothing else in between. And sometimes, like, the red one will come on and off and then come back on and then find the blue one and stuff. But right. One interesting thing is the EMF detector. It's been sitting here on the floor, okay, and it spiked a couple times at random. Now, with this, um... It could be, <laughs> it could be, see like right now there's nothing on the floor, there's no spikes at all, the, uh, the meter's not moving, and I, I, in the video you should have heard it, it went off twice, that means it was enough to, to set it off, um, but it could be, once again, it's not necessarily anything paranormal, uh, there are several things that can set this off, any kind of surge of electricity, uh, old wire, wiring on the floor, uh, someone turning something on or off in a lower level of the building, uh, even just things in the atmosphere, certain signals and such could set this off. So it's not definitely um, anything paranormal, but there was, like I said, a surge there that wasn't there before. So I think with the, with the evidence that we got, or the uh, information that we have, it would be a good idea to just set up in front of 525 here, record, and perhaps see if we can pick up any disembodied voices. Watch the door slam shut. Bam, behind you. Yes, and then be locked. start up an EVP session here with this uh, we may not hear anything as we're doing the EVP session as we're asking the questions but it's believed that uh, if the recorder is sensitive enough it could pick up voices that we may not hear 
um, with our naked ear per se. So. So I have the digital voice recorder right here, and I think I'll set this maybe uh, on the back of the sofa here. Okay. Just because it's a nice central location. And we'll start with saying our names just so we know where everyone is and how many people are here, and also. Um, Remember not to whisper so that we don't mistake it as anything paranormal. I'm Jeff. Linda. This is Matt. This is Brandon. And uh, we don't mean to impose by any means, but uh, we would like to know if there's anybody here with us. If there is, could you tell us your name? So we can't say for sure as far as the spirit box session goes that anything that was said was definitely related to uh, anything in the building or anything paranormal by any means. Uh, the recording that we took, we're going to have to go and analyze that and listen to it. Uh, we won't know right off the bat if there's any voices on there until we play it back and hear what it picked up. So that'll just take listening to. What we're going to do now is go ahead down to the fourth floor and see if we can pick up any further activity down there. This hall is a little more creepy. I agree. This hall is definitely a little more creepy. I'm not sure if it's because of the original woodwork or, or woodwork still being here. Um, the upstairs is a little more institutional with its uh, tile floor. Right. But this still has the uh, wood floor. You can see it rippling in some places, so it's probably fairly old floor. But, uh, and of course, it's a little darker. Right. So, so it always adds to the ambience. Yeah. yeah. Ambience. So we have four dice. I set them here. Okay, because I thought that perhaps um, somebody might find interest in them, move them. They're easy, if you notice, they're old-fashioned dice. So they're kind of easy. They have these little rounded corners. So they're a little bit easier to move and manipulate than regular um, dice would be. Right. And I purposely put these two dice, each on, a, on the number two, because uh, supposedly Mary Snyder was 22 when she had died here. So I thought that might be kind of a cool thing to do. The other ones are just put on some random number. But um, I set them in here when we came and set up the camera. And so far it doesn't look like anything has manipulated them or moved them in any way. So I don't know. We'll leave them here a while longer and, uh, and just kind of keep watch on them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to start this. Uh, Paratech app here, and I, I'm not saying this works by any means, but uh, there's been some interesting results here and there with it, as opposed to a lot of the other apps that are out there. Close to the API, isn't it? it is. Maybe he just spelled it wrong. Oh. That's weird because it said help through there. Yeah. And help on the radio when you were listening to it. Yeah, I said that's what he's saying. Victor.
So overall, I think the investigation went really well. We had some interesting things that happened. Um, we're, we're, of course, like any other t investigation, we're going to have to go and look at the audio, uh, look at the video, and an analyze everything, and that takes a little bit of time. But um, some of the spirit box sessions were sort of interesting, uh, especially trying that new um, method that Jeff had come up with. And I really like the method because I really think that it omits um, any possibility of bias on the part of the person who is um, listening. So that's a really great thing. We're going to have to implement that in some other investigations coming up very soon. So I have to say that I really do love these old buildings. Um, buildings that hold such history that go back to the late 1800s. Um, we've been to several locations like this, historic locations, and often they do have a ghost story associated with them. Whether or not they're haunted, uh, sometimes it's hard to say. As far as this building right here, I can't say for sure that we picked up any evidence of it being haunted. There's still a lot to analyze and uh, we have to listen to the recordings and such. But also, even if we don't pick up any activity, it doesn't mean that the location isn't haunted. It just means that at that night, for whatever reason, nothing there was willing to interact with us. And that happens sometimes. It's believed that sometimes spirits will shy away and they won't come and interact. They won't come out and talk. Um, so good possibility for tonight. Any evidence we do find, uh, be they EVPs or pictures, we're going to post on our various websites, of course. Um, any pictures that we find that are interesting, we'll post on our Instagram, at Virginia Paranormal. And also check out VAParanormal.com for more.